welcome to another show on Nebo TV. It's your girl again, Agbaje Onome. I'm so happy to have us on this platform today. Today, we're going to talk about the Nigerian police force and its new development. The Nigerian Police Force and the African Union Police, AFPRO, International Police, Interpol, and the West African Police Chiefs Committee, WAPCO, have begun talks to stem the flow of arms from Europe, the Sahel, and the Gulf of Guinea into the country, Nigeria. The collaboration, the police said on 16th of March 2021 in Abuja, is part of efforts to curb the supply of arms, ammunition and drugs to bandits and insurgents in a bid to combat the security crisis in the country. First Public Relations Officer Mr. Frank Umba, a commissioner of police, said while parading 50 suspects involved in gun running, unlawful possession of arms, kidnapping, armed robbery and other crimes, that detectives were closing in on arms manufacturers with a view to breaking up supply chain. He added that the police were partnering with international crime organizations and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, to curtail arms smuggling and drug peddling that are fueling banditry and insurgencies in Nigeria. Two of the suspects that were arrested for gun running confessed to their involvement in supplying arms to a bandit leader in Kaduna. Mumba said when the police swooped on the bandit leader's house, he fled, leaving behind 201 ammunition with a family where all the members were involved in arms distribution. Dan Ladi, one of the suspects, said he delivered 700 ammunition in his first supply to the bandits and 1,555 in the second supply. He said the ammunition was conveyed in a car and hidden in a compartment under the boot. Now, this will bring us to the point where we would want to ask questions about the police that are in various checkpoints on the road when someone is traveling. I mean, if per somebody can, can hide 700 ammunition in a car boot, and the person will pass through that checkpoint. So, what are they actually checking? Like... What are they checking? Is it to just harass guys or inside the vehicle, tell them to come down, empty their bags, their pockets? Is, does it just end there? Then they just check the cars around. And sometimes, oftentimes, not just sometimes, they receive tips and the vehicle just goes like that. And this is one of the results of them not doing their job properly. The suspect said each trip he goes for fetched him 115,000 naira. Imagine. Now, two other suspects that were arrested for trade in illicit weapons sold four AK 47 rifles and six locally made pistols to bandits. One of the suspects initially arrested and detained in Kano prison from where he was moved to Kaduna, where he was granted pardon by the governor and later returned to crime. Mba said the suspects received shotguns from suppliers at the rate of 50,000 naira and resold at the rate of 70,000 naira. <laughs> so, so interesting. And unfortunate as well. According to Mba, efforts are on to track members of the gang who are on the run. It is part of the effort to mop up weapons in circulation and block the flow to ensure the nation is rid of armed banditry and other crimes. All right, recall that presidential spokesman Malam Gaba Shewu on 3rd of March 2021 said that President Mamadou Buhari has directed security agents to shoot anyone seen with AK-47 and directed a clampdown on bandits who have refused to surrender. Shehu also said the federal government declared Zamfara a no-fly zone following intelligence that arms are being transported to the bandits with private jets. He said the jets are also used to cut away gold from the state to Dubai, which according to him prompted the ban on mining activities, which was also announced on Tuesday 3rd of March 2021. He noted further that the state police would provide complementary efforts to the police in ensuring wide coverage of the nation in terms of police operation. 
Recall also that Kaduna State Governor Malam Nassar Erufai also called for state police, saying it was one sure way of curtailing the insecurity in the nation. Prior to this, the Dabaochi State Governor on February 12, 2021, said Fulani headers have no option but to carry AK-47 for self-defense because they have been attacked and killed by cattle rustlers. He also condemned Southwest Southeast governors and other governors, especially Governor Autumn, over the manner in which they are handling farmer header clashes. Governor Autumn had on February 22nd responded to his Bauchi counterpart, accusing him of being a terrorist based on his utterances supporting headsmen from carrying AK-47 to defend themselves. Autumn also accused Mohammed, the Bauchi state governor, of being a part of those threatening his life, stressing that Bauchi governor should be held responsible if anything happens to him. All right, gradually, Nigerian government is responding to the menace in our society. But could this be the efforts of the new chief of arm that was appointed? Recall that President Mamadou Buhari on Wednesday, 26th of January, accepted the immediate resignation of the service chiefs and appointed new officers as replacements. The replacement of the service chiefs came after numerous calls for their sack over the increasing insecurity in the country. But despite the debates over the reason behind the replacement, the presidency maintained that it was considered the best decision for the country at that moment. Although human rights lawyer Femi Falana faulted President Mamadou Buhari's appointment of new service chiefs following the resignation of the former officers. In a statement personally signed by him on 27th of January 2021, Mr. Falana quoted a 2013 judgment which described the appointment of service chiefs without the concurrence of the National Assembly as illegal and unconstitutional. Consequently, he said the service chiefs have only been nominated but not appointed. But the special advisor on media and publicity to President Mamadou Buhari, Femi Adesina, says the president felt it was the best time to rejig the security system in the country with the appointment of new service chiefs. However, regarding insecurity, there are moves by various communities affected by these to curb the menace. The Odua People's Congress, OPC, Amoteku and others are in their ways trying to curb the situation. Successfully, the OPC apprehended a notorious Fulani Hesman who is the kingpin of all criminalities in the southwest region. They further discovered the hideout of their dangerous weapons in one of the huts in the community. So, with the Nigerian security and community policing, don't we think that insecurity in Nigeria will be reduced drastically in no time? What's your take? Drop your comment in the comment section below as we wrap up now. Thanks for tuning in today on Nebo TV. My name remains Agbachi Onome. Please don't forget to click the subscription button if you're yet to do so. And also the thumbs up like button if you love the video. Follow us on our Instagram page at Nebo TV and our Facebook page at Nebo Tele. I'm gonna see you next time. Stay safe. God bless you and God bless Nigeria.